In this demo, I'm going to extend my existing ASP.NET Core Web API app to receive notifications from Microsoft Graph subscriptions. The notifications are sent after a subscription has been successfully created, requesting Microsoft Graph to notify a specific endpoint when the specified entities are created, updated, or deleted. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go modify our app. So I'm going to come over here to the startup.cs file. And I'm looking for something called HTTPS redirection, which you see right here inside of our configure. I'm going to go ahead and comment that line out. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a couple modal, uh, uh, models uh, to our project. So I'm going to create a new folder called models. And the first one we're going to create is for notifications. So I'm going to create a new file inside of models called notification.cs and I'll paste that in. And what this is, is going to be a JSON file uh, or a file that's going to be used uh, for helping me uh, take a JSON object that I get back in a request or I get submitted in a request and then taking that data and deserializing it uh, for a, um, uh, to, .NET, to a .NET object to make it easier to work with. The next one we're going to create is another file uh, called resource data. So I'll go into my models folder again and create one called resource data.cs and I'll paste that in. That's doing the same thing. That's a child, um, a resource data is a child property uh, on my, um, uh, my notification object that we created a moment ago. And then the last model that I'm going to create is one for uh, my config.cs um, that we'll uh, use in just a minute. All right, so now once that's done, let's go back. Uh, to our startup file that we had. And inside of the configure services method here, um, what I want to do is I want to go update the code that we see here for controllers and swagger and all that stuff. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace this code that you see here with the following code. So what does this do? So we're setting the compatibility service version uh, for an MVC to version uh, three, and then I'm setting up a Swagger file for using Swagger v1 with the configuration, and then I'm going to load my config file. So I'm binding my config to a specific configuration file. We're going to do that in just a minute. And then finally, I'm adding our configuration uh, as a singleton uh, to our app. Now, our project has a file here called app settings. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And let's replace the contents of this with what you see here. So notice I have a config object that I've specified. Now I need to update some of the values in this file. We've got things like the app ID, secret, tenant, and ngrok. So app ID, secret, and tenant, those are all the values for our application that we registered in Azure AD. So I'm gonna grab those and I'm gonna paste those in here. We registered that app in a previous demo. Um, so if you didn't see that, to go back in the videos to see where we uh, registered the app. Um, so there's our app ID. We have our tenant ID that we'll add in. And we have our application secret. And then finally, we have our ngrok URL where our web server is hosted, or at least this is the routable URL that we spun up in our last demo that's pointing to our local server right now, our local web server that's running. All right, now, the application is going to require a new controller to process the subscription and the notification. So inside of the controllers folder, I'm going to create a new file called notificationscontroller.cs, and I'll paste in the code. So now, what is this code doing? Let's take a look at this. So here, when we issue a get, well, first of all, we're going to load our configuration. So you see that's being injected in as part of the dependency injection. So that's how we're going to get a reference to all the credentials and details for our app. Where then, when there's a, a GET request that's submitted, um, what that's going to do is that's going to uh, get a uh, instance of the Microsoft Graph authenticated client. That's defined later on in this file. We'll look at that in a minute. But what this is doing is, is it's creating a new subscription object. It's going to take that subscription object. It's going to tell Microsoft Graph that I want to be notified when items are updated. It's going to tell me where, to, where is it going to notify me? Well, it's going to go to our ngrok URL, our basically pointing to our local web API, slash API, slash notifications that we're listening for. 
The resource that we're looking for is the users collection. Um, I want this to expire or this subscription to expire in five minutes. And then the client state is just some string that I'm passing in. And what's cool about this is that as you saw, as we talked about uh, in a previous video, is that this is a string that, that I'm defining when I create the subscription. And that string is gonna be passed to me every time we get the notification. So I can make sure that someone's not spoofing a uh, something uh, or spoofing a request to me. I'm then gonna use the graph client to go to the, service, the subscriptions collection, uh, create the request and add asynchronously the subscription that we just defined. And then I'm gonna write that out uh, as a string, the results of the, of the subscription has been created. Now, the next thing is what happens when I get a post from this subscription. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to do some validation. So what that does, what the validation does is that when you first create your subscription, Microsoft Graph is going to very quickly do an HTTP post with a string uh, on the query string um, called a validation token. And what you have to do is you have to respond right away with um, a, an HTTP status of uh, 200, or as you see there on line 55 and okay. And you need to write out that the received token is the token that you just got. And that basically just tells um, Microsoft Graph that yes, this endpoint that they're creating a subscription for, that it actually works. Now, if there's no validation token on it, then I know that this post is coming from Microsoft Graph as part of the notification subscription that I'm asking for. So then I'm gonna go handle all of our notifications. So I'm gonna look at the body that was brought that, that of the notification that was submitted to me. I'm gonna read all the contents in, and then I'm gonna deserialize the notifications using my notifications model that we defined earlier. And then I'm gonna walk through all of the items in the notification to write out that uh, a item or that a user has been updated. And the last step that you see down here at the bottom is these are the things that are all related to creating um, a reference or a connection to Microsoft Graph. So I'm creating a new Graph service client and I'm using this thing called a delegated, uh, delegate authentication provider. And what that's doing is, is it's gonna be calling a method get access token that you see is a little bit farther down. When it gets the access token for every request that's being submitted, it's gonna go add in an authorization header with the value of bearer and the access token. Getting the access token is simply using the, the confidential client um, object which is coming from uh, Microsoft Authentication Library and it's creating a connection using our client ID our client secret for the specific tenant uh, to for everything to work so with that in that case oh, we're also defining uh, the default permission so what that is that default permission is giving me um, the permissions that have are the application permissions that have been granted so now I can save all my changes now, by default, the .NET Core launch configuration in this project is going to open a browser and navigate to the default URL for the application whenever I launch the debugger. But for this application, I want to navigate to the ngrok URL. So if I leave the launch configuration as is, each time I want to debug the app, it's going to display a broken page. So I can just change the URL or I can change the launch configuration to not launch the browser. So the way I'm going to do that is go into the launch.json file and I'm looking for the configuration of open externally, which you see right here on the server launch. So this piece right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one section and then save my changes. So now let's test our application. So I'm gonna test it by going run, start debugging, and in the debug console, so what it's doing now is it's loading all of the dependencies and now it's spinning up our app. So now that we can see everything up and running, we can now go uh, open a browser and test our application. So let's go to the browser and test our app. So I'm gonna come over here and we'll go to HTTPS localhost 5000 slash API slash notifications. Oh, we don't want HTTPS, we wanna be on our unsecure endpoint because we aren't serving up HTTPS at the moment. Now, what this is doing is this is creating our notification to Microsoft Graph. Um, if this was successful, you should see the output like what you see right here. This is listing out the notification or the subscription ID uh, that we define. So our application is now subscribed to receive notifications from the Microsoft Graph when an update is made on any of the Microsoft 365 or our, our Microsoft 365 tenant. 
So now let's test the subscription by updating a user to trigger a notification from Microsoft Graph. So I'm gonna do that by going to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So I'll go to admin.microsoft.com. We're gonna to go to our active users. And let's go find Adele. So I'll take the uh, user Adele and let's make a change to her contact information. So I'm gonna scroll down to her contact information. And let's make a change here. So I'm gonna change her phone number. Notice that it's 555-2345. I'm gonna change that to 1111. And then I'm gonna save my changes. So after we've made our changes, if I come over to uh, the, back to uh, VS Code, we can see in the debug console that we can see we received uh, a request from Microsoft Graph. And specifically, we're writing out the notification that we see that there is some user that some notification happened. Now this indicates that the application successfully received the notification from Microsoft Graph for the specified uh, user um, in the output. I can then use this information to then query the Microsoft Graph for the user's full details if I wanna synchronize their details in my application.